Today, forced induction is a key aspect in all categories of performance motoring. It is an important performance upgrade in everything from drag racing to circuit racing. This video will explain the similarities and differences between the two main methods of achieving forced induction, supercharging and turbocharging. Let's begin with superchargers. From Answers.com, a supercharger is defined as a blower or compressor usually driven by the engine for supplying air under high pressure to the cylinders of an internal combustion engine. There are several types of superchargers, all of which are powered by the crank or accessory belt on the engine, giving power to the blower through a pulley on the supercharger itself. This means all superchargers have a small parasitic effect on the engine. The first type of supercharger we will discuss is called a centrifugal supercharger. A centrifugal supercharger resembles a turbocharger and uses a small impeller to compress air into the cylinders. This type of supercharger is the most efficient of the three kinds but produces the smallest boost at low RPMs. This type of supercharger is also the most ideal to install on near stock engines because it generally produces the lowest amount of boost. Also, a centrifugal supercharger produces very low heat buildup, so there is usually not need for an intercooler. The typical operating speed for a centrifugal type supercharger is around 40,000 RPMs. Take a listen to the sound of a centrifugal Vortec supercharger. The next type of supercharger is called a roots type supercharger. This supercharger was the first kind ever to be used and is also called a blower, although the nickname blower can usually refer to any type of supercharger. It involves two rotating meshing lobes powered by a pulley connected to the engine crank, which force large quantities of air into the intake manifold, increasing pressure and creating boost. Roots type superchargers produce very large low end boost and very large amounts of high RPM boost as well, making them desirable for extreme power situations. The drawback to a roots type supercharger is that they create large amounts of heat buildup, so an intercooler is usually needed within the system to get maximum boost. Roots type super systems are usually the largest and most recognizable type of supercharger and usually extrude from the hood. This video is of a small block Ford engine with a roots blower mounted on top of it. type of supercharger is called a screw supercharger. This type of supercharger uses two rotating meshing screws powered by the engine's crank pulley to take in air and compress it, then force it into the cylinder. In many ways, this type of supercharger is very similar to the roots type, involving screws instead of propeller-like lobes. The twin screw supercharger is very powerful within the low RPMs, but also produces large amounts of boost throughout the entire RPM range. At moderate boost levels, a twin screw supercharger does not produce large heat, large heat buildup, so similar to a centrifugal supercharger, they do not usually require intercoolers. Unlike centrifugal superchargers, twin screw superchargers can be complicated to install. Both roots and twin screw superchargers usually spin at around 15,000 RPM. This video is of a Whipple twin screw supercharged Ford Lightning. The main advantages to a supercharger are no lag. Superchargers, because they are connected to the engine's crank pulley, spin up immediately when the engine does, creating instant boost. Superchargers also create much more low-end boost than turbos because of this reason. Superchargers are generally more reliable than turbos because they involve less parts. This means they are generally also much simpler to install. Superchargers in general produce a wider power band than a turbo, making large boost at very low and very high RPMs. Air will never pass backwards through a supercharged system. With an intercooler and modified internals, most superchargers run much more efficiently and can produce boost levels a little over 20 PSI. Superchargers are much safer to use because they do not run nearly as hot, they do not surge, and while many companies sell very high boost level units, they still do not create as much boost as high performance turbos, therefore engine detonation is much less likely. The main disadvantages to a supercharger are the parasitic effect a supercharger has on the engine. Because superchargers require power from the crank to operate, the engine must give up some of the power made in order to allow more air to be forced in. On many engines, though, this effect is negligible. Superchargers are generally less fuel efficient than turbochargers, mostly because of the parasitic effect.
Now, let's move on to turbochargers. Answers.com defines a turbocharger as an air compressor or supercharger on an internal combustion piston engine that is driven by the ex engine exhaust gas to increase or boost the amount of fuel that can be burned in the cylinder, thereby increasing engine power and performance. So really, a turbocharger is only a specific type of supercharger. Instead of using engine power from a crank pulley, it uses the energy stored in the exhaust gases. Turbochargers have a centrifugal design, and unlike belt or gear-driven superchargers, there's only one type. Turbos are attached to the exhaust manifold of the engine and utilize high-energy high exhaust gases to spin a turbine. This turbine is connected to an impeller, or compressor, via a small shaft which in turn compresses air into the intake manifold and creates boost. The main advantages to turbochargers are Turbochargers, because they are not physically connected to the engine, can spin much faster than superchargers, usually up to around 150,000 RPM. This means that turbos generally make more boost than superchargers, in many cases over 25 PSI. Despite the complication of turbo setups, turbos are usually much more efficient than superchargers because they utilize energy stored in the exhaust gases instead of having a parasitic effect on the engine. Turbochargers are generally quieter than superchargers because the turbocharger itself acts as another silencer. In terms of the power struggle between a turbocharger and the supercharger, the turbocharger reigns supreme, producing more boost and therefore more horsepower gains than a comparable supercharger. Some disadvantages of a turbocharger are The turbocharger usually requires an oil line from the engine. Turbochargers, because they are attached to the exhaust manifold, are usually extremely hot and therefore almost always require intercoolers to produce even moderate boost levels. Turbos are generally more complicated and dangerous to run than superchargers. Turbos can spike to enormous levels of boost and cause en engine detonation. Turbos can also surge or run in reverse when exhaust pressure is removed, which causes huge turbo lag and damage to the turbo. Turbos also require very large, complicated plumbing with several components to allow the turbo to run at peak efficiency. These parts include modified manifolds, intercoolers, large amounts of piping, blow-off valves, and oil lines, not to mention and several different engine modifications. Because of the large number of parts, tuning turbos is notoriously tricky. The most noticeable disadvantage to a turbocharging system is what's called turbo lag. This lag refers to the time immediately after the throttle has been applied to the engine and the turbo begins to spool up. Until the turbo can spool up to the point where it can compress air, the engine runs without forced induction, creating a period of low power. The larger the turbo, usually the greater the lag, because more energy is required to spool up the turbine. This video is of a turbocharged Mustang. Listen to the turbo whistle as throttle is applied. <laughs> As to which system is better for your car, the answer depends entirely on your setup and your personal opinion as well. Both are extremely effective methods of forced induction. I hope this video helped you understand the major differences between these two systems. Thanks for watching.